Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, the Raiders made a plethora of roster moves on Thursday. We'll tell you all about that. Plus, of course, on Fridays, we always give you the keys to victory, what the Raiders need to do offensively, defensively, special teams, all three phases of the game to come away with the victory. Your calls and texts will close us out. All coming up on Friday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, November 11th. It's Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day here on the Locked On Raiders podcast. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And welcome in, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen each and every day. Remember, you can find the Locked On Raider podcast free and available on all platforms. And off top, I want to thank all the veterans out there. And I know we don't do this enough, and usually we only end up shouting out the veterans and even the ones that have passed away that have served our militaries and our armed forces. Uh, we only do it a few times a year, and it's not enough. It's a few times too little right and so we definitely need to go out there and show that love to the veterans especially on a day like today with veterans day so thank you uh, so much to all the veterans that have uh, sacrificed the ultimate sacrifice to allow knuckleheads like myself to be able to do what i do on the daily which is deliver podcasts talk football on the radio and uh, as i mentioned on podcasts so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart i can never thank you enough and i can never sacrifice as much as you've had to sacrifice thank you and your families for the sacrifice we do appreciate you on this veterans day today's episode of the locked on raiders podcast is being brought to you by linkedin jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on nfl and i mentioned off the top of the show that the raiders made a plethora of roster moves on thursday and man oh man they did and you know it's crazy i'm um, doing podcasts and talking about the raiders have no business losing this game on sunday to the colts and i still believe that Raider Nation, I know I said that on Wednesday, did the crossover edition with Zach on Thursday, told him that as well. But man, oh man, as things continue to go and as the news continues to roll out, it's almost like the Raiders are like, well, Q, yeah, we don't have any business losing this game, but we're going to do everything we can to kind of make it close, <laughs> right? I mean, we all know everything going on with the Indianapolis Colts with the new head coach and Jeff Saturday that has never coached anything in the NFL, anything higher than high school, as a matter of fact. We know they have a play caller that's never called plays. He's 30 years old. He's going to be in the booth calling plays to a quarterback in Sam Ellinger, who, oh, by the way, is on his third offensive coordinator in three games. We think Derek Carr has it bad. Think about that, Raider Nation. Derek Carr has it bad, right? Because he's had so many coaches, so many new systems, so many offensive coordinators, so much turnover in Derek Carr's career. Sam Ellinger, who's going to be starting on Sunday for the Colts, has had three offensive coordinators in three games. So you want to talk about doing bad, that brother is doing bad. Of course, we'll talk about keys to victory coming up in segment number two. But I do want to get into the roster moves that were made on Thursday. And it was so many of them. I got hit up on Twitter with folks saying, Q, your whole podcast uh, on Friday is going to be all about news and notes because of everything that is rolling out. And I really did think because of all the craziness that's going on with Twitter right now with the all blue check and buying a blue and being verified and not really being verified and all that nonsense going on on Twitter right now, making the cesspool even more of a cesspool. I, I just, I almost felt like I was getting punked on Thursday. So much was going on. Darren Waller started it off. The Raiders put Darren Waller on IR. So he's already missed three games. He's going to miss at least at the minimal four more games. Then they doubled down with that. Hunter Renfro put him on IR. So he's going to be out the next four games. And Waller, of course, is dealing with the hamstring injury. Hunter Renfro is dealing with the hamstring and ribs. Uh, they're calling it an oblique injury. He's out at least four games. So those are two, two of the three-headed monsters that I've talked about on the offense all the time for the Raiders that are out for at least the next four games. And especially with Darren Waller, that's going to make seven games in a row that he's out. You want to talk about a return on investment. The Raiders aren't getting a return on investment on any of the players that they invested a lot of money on this season. Waller was extended. Renfro was extended. Carr was extended. Adams was traded for and gave it a big, large amount of money. Adams has done okay. Actually, he's done good. I'll say he's done good. I mean, a lot of the issues aren't his fault, but at the same time, it's not just, it's not like he's just setting the world on fire, right? But all the money that was dished out, and really look at the investment. Look at the money on the defensive side of the ball with Chandler Jones. A lot of money, 
not very much on the return of investment. So obviously that's bad, but let's get back to the roster moves. Hunter Renfro's on IR, Darren Waller's on IR. Then all of a sudden, Blake, Blake Martinez, who led the team in tackles on Sunday against the Jaguars with 11, decided he was going to retire. So he retired on Thursday. He's going to be a dad. He doesn't, you know what, at 28 years old, uh, the Raiders playing the way that they're playing. Uh, you know, I know he's only been with the team about five weeks. Eh, no thanks, but no thanks. So he retired. That's when I really thought I was getting punked. Like, okay, come on. Are you kidding me? So that all happened. Hunter Renfro IR, Darren Waller IR, Blake Martinez to reserve retired list. Then they did sign linebacker Curtis Bolton to the active roster. He was on the practice squad. Then they signed linebacker Reggie Raglan to the practice squad. He was out of the league. He didn't have a team at all. They signed him to the practice squad to take the place of Curtis Bolton. And tight end Jacob Hollister has been signed uh, with the Raiders from the Vikings practice squad. He'll be on the active roster, even though that's not official yet. So sometime today, the Raiders will make that official. But all those roster moves happen. All those that I just went over happen on Thursday. Yeah, I couldn't believe it, but it's true. That's what happened. So let me go over the injury report real quick for the Silver and Black on Thursday. And, of course, we'll get another injury report coming up on uh on, on today, and then we'll get another one on Sunday, and it won't be an injury report. It'll just be the actives, inactives, who's in and who's out. That's about 90 minutes before kickoff. So real quick, I'll go over what the Raiders did. Of course, Waller and Renfro are IR'd, uh, and Blake Martinez has retired. Linebacker Denzel Perriman, hip and rib injury, didn't participate on Wednesday, was limited on Thursday. Keelan Cole, the wide receiver, dealing with a knee injury, limited on Wednesday, full participant on Thursday. Derek Carr's been full all week, dealing with the back injury. And linebacker Darian Butler, hip injury, limited Wednesday, limited on Thursday. As far as the Colts go, looking at their uh, injury report real quick from Thursday, uh, you have Mo Ali cox uh, dealing with the ankle injury. He's the tight end for the Colts. Didn't participate on Wednesday or Thursday. Also, guys that didn't participate, running back Deion Jackson, knee injury, didn't participate Wednesday or Thursday. Tight end Jelani Woods, shoulder injury, didn't participate Wednesday or Thursday. Guys that were limited, how about cornerback Tony Brown? He has a hamstring injury, didn't participate on Wednesday, limited on Thursday. Uh, also, there's got to be another one. No, another, not another limited. Okay, how about a full? Cornerback Stephon Gilmore, he was resting, he's full. Uh, Rodney McLeod, he was resting, he was full. Unique Ngakwe, rest, he was full. Quarterback Matt Ryan, shoulder injury, he was a full participant on Thursday. So maybe if things don't start going right with Sam Ellinger, maybe they throw Matty Ice back into the game. Center Ryan Kelly, knee injury, limited on Wednesday. Full participant on Thursday. Running back Jonathan Taylor, ankle injury, limited on Wednesday. Full participant on Thursday. I absolutely believe 100% he'll be part playing on Sunday. Linebacker Shaquille Leonard, back ankle injury, was not listed on Wednesday, did not participate on Thursday, so he might be out again on Sunday. And then defensive tackle Grover Stewart, who's a big-time player for them, rest day. He did not participate on Thursday, so he'll be out there on Sunday. But that's all I got for you. Those are the roster moves and the injury report. We'll talk about keys to victory coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. There's a lot there, though, right? A lot going on when you look at the silver and black and what they have going on as far as uh, the, the roster moves that they made. And of course, Jonathan Abram, they waived him earlier in the week and he's now with the Green Bay Packers. So, man, there's a lot going on with the silver and black. Again, we'll talk about uh, the game and keys to victory Coming up in segment number two, before we get to any of that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is LinkedIn Jobs. And these days, every new potential hire can make it feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You always want to be 100 percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs will help you find the right people for your team faster and for free. All you got to do is make a post. It's easy to create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs. You add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools, screening questions, make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and who you'd like to hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs will help you find the qualified candidate you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. 
Terms and conditions apply. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Each and every Friday, I like to go ahead and give the keys to victory, what the Raiders need to do offensively, defensively, special teams, overall, all phases of the game to come away with the victory. And, you know, I know that the Raiders are sitting there at two and six, and I know some will look and say, oh, Q, you're giving false hope to uh, Raider Nation. The Raiders don't care about winning. I don't even care if the Raiders win because what are they going to do with it anyway? Look, I'll say this, especially since there's a new regime, And there's players that are still wondering if these coaches are the right coaches to be leading them in the direction that they need to be going. These guys need to win, you know, uh, draft spot be damned, right? I had someone call the radio station the other day and was saying, well, uh, the Raiders just have to lose the rest and get a number one overall pick or the top two or three pick. And I was like, what does that matter? It doesn't really matter the draft position. I understand what you're saying. I understand what a lot of people that believe that are saying. But the Raiders have proven in the in the past that it doesn't really matter what position they draft at. They're not going to get the right guy. They haven't got the right guy. Right. And it's up to this new regime, no matter where they draft to select the right guys. Look, they didn't have a first pick this uh, this past year until the third round. And that's when they went out there and they got Dylan Parham. And I think that he's a really good pick. They also got Zamir White. And I'm sure uh, down the stretch if things are going even worse. You're going to see a lot more of Zamir White. Uh, moving on, right? And, and there's, there's other guys that they selected, obviously, that look like they could be good players. We'll probably see a lot more of them uh, between now and the end of the season. But look, it, it, these guys need to see wins. These guys need to see some success. Players like Josh Jacobs don't give a damn about when the Raiders pick because he might not even be a Raider next year. There's other guys that don't care about where the Raiders pick or where their selection is because they might not be here next year, right? I mean, there's a lot of guys that could not be here next season. They don't care where the Raiders are, sl- are picking. So right now, for the team, I don't care what the front office is thinking or any of that. For the players in that locker room that are out there on that practice field sweating and bleeding and crying and you know trying to get better and better each and every day and embarrassed because they're losing the way they are, they need to see a victory. They need to get a W, right? I like to call them slump busters. They need a slump buster, and the Indianapolis Colts very well could be that. So what do they need to do to go ahead and get it done? I'm going to start defensively. Because there's so many questions with the Indianapolis Colts coming in. I mentioned it multiple times this week that the Raiders have no business losing the game. I'm not saying they're not going to lose the game. I'm saying they have no business. With everything going on with the Indianapolis Colts, with all the dysfunction that they have going on uh, from their coach in Jeff Saturday, has never coached higher than a high school game. Uh, Their offensive coordinator has never called plays in the NFL. I mean, he's a 30-year-old. He's a young dude. Uh, Their quarterback, as I mentioned in segment number one, is on their third offensive coordinator, his third offensive coordinator in three games. Yeah, you think that that's easy? He got sacked nine times last uh, last game. So when I look at the Raiders in their defense, what they need to do, because I believe Jonathan Taylor is going to play, they need to focus first on stopping the run. And I'm not saying stop him, like shut him down. I'm just saying don't let him wreck the game. Last time that they played the Colts last season, yeah, I think he had 100 yards and a touchdown, but he didn't wreck the game. It wasn't one of those where you ever looked up and was like, oh my gosh, that Jonathan Taylor is at it again. He didn't wreck the game. So whatever he does, just don't let him wreck the game. But there's got to be an emphasis and a focus on the run game, slowing it down. Make Sam Ellinger drop back and pass early and make Sam Ellinger drop back and pass and often. He was sacked nine times versus the Patriots last week. That's nine times. And the Raiders have gone two straight games with no sacks. This is one of these games where I think Max Crosby should eat. This is one of these games I think Chandler Jones should eat and anyone else getting to the quarterback, even the big uglies in the middle, right? The defensive tackles, the Bilal Nichols, the Andrew Billings, you know, those cats, they should be uh, getting after the quarterback. I don't care who it is, right? Neil Farrell, any of those guys that are playing in the interior of the defensive line, everyone on that D line should be getting at the quarterback. I don't care if Patrick Graham is blitzing, whatever the case may be, Sam Ellinger should go down at least three times, right? I'm not, I'm not greedy. I'm not asking for nine sacks, but they haven't had a sack in two games. They need to have at least three on Sunday to make Sam Ellinger very uncomfortable. He has not thrown an NFL touchdown yet. And I know he hasn't had a whole lot of games under his belt, but he still has not thrown an NFL touchdown. Don't let your team be the one that all of a sudden has this guy feeling like, I can do this in the NFL. This ain't that difficult. Look what I just did against him. Davis Mills had himself a hell of a game for the Houston Texans. Even though they lost the game, he was having himself a hell of a game. The Raiders can't allow Sam Ellinger to all of a sudden get comfortable. And the dude could run. I know him very well from his time at UT uh, when he was coming in, when he was in college before he went to the NFL. He can run. He's very athletic, and that gives uh, the Raiders' defense trouble. Athletic quarterbacks, as you saw from Trevor Lawrence, gives the Raiders tr- that defense trouble. So they've got to be able to really lock in, make Sam Ellinger uncomfortable, sack him three times at least, create a turnover or two. You know, hey, get greedy. Create a t- turnover or two. 
but really focusing on stopping the run. Offensively, I know the Colts have a solid defense, but the Raiders, to their credit, they've gone up against defenses that have been really good. The Broncos, and they put up 30-plus points on them. I mean, that, that, was, that was easy. The Texans have a really good defense. They were able to put up 21 points in the fourth quarter on the Texans' defense. I mean, they showed that they can score. And I know that they, you know, get to points where they stop scoring like they did last week against the Jaguars. But uh, this is going to be the, the, a tough defense that the Raiders are going to go up against. But this is also going to be the most talent on, on offense that the Colts have had to face. And obviously, it looks a little different. It's a little compromised now. Since there's definitely no Darren Waller and definitely no Hunter Renfro, it's going to have to be the Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, and Mac Holland show. I mean, and, that, and that's really what it's going to be, right? Derek Carr is going to have to protect the ball at all costs, but he's going to have to be very smart going to have to be Devontae Adams, feed Devontae Adams, feed Josh Jacobs. Those two guys are going to have to carry the load in a, in a major way for the Raiders offense. So that's what you pay, get paid the big bucks for. Devontae Adams, uh, he's a volume receiver by in his words, not mine. He wants the ball early and he wants the ball often. So go ahead and feed it to him. But Josh Jacobs has got to do his thing as well. So uh, those two guys, I think the Raiders really need to lean on in this game to get it done. Because again, there is no Hunter Renfro. You know, there's no Darren Waller. Mac Hollins is good, but he's not a guy that you're just going to force feed the rock to. And you think he's going to lead you to the promised land. So this is the Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs and Derek Carr show. No doubt about it on Sunday offensively. And then special teams kick the damn ball, of the end zone, kick the ball, of the end zone, kick the ball out of the end zone, please. No short fields. It's that simple. No short fields. It's ridiculous. That big kickoff return that the Jaguars had on Sunday, 52 yards to open up the third quarter, should never happen. Your kick coverage is not good. Stop trying to say, no, you know what? It'll be better this time. Just kick it out of the end zone. Just make them start at the 25. If the Colts and Sam Ellinger go 75 yards and score a touchdown, fine. Tip the cap and say you did that. No doubt. But don't give them a short field because then they'll get confidence and they'll believe that they can do that. So special teams, it's real easy. Kick the ball out of the end zone, no short fields. And overall, play angry. Said it last week. Play angry. Play with some pride. Don't embarrass yourselves. Don't embarrass your fan base. You know, if you're going to go out there, go out there and show some pride at home. Beat the brakes off a team you're supposed to beat the brakes off. The Colts are a dysfunctional team. I know the Raiders aren't where they need to be, but the Colts are very dysfunctional. So, you know, just I, I would laugh because it's just silly. Like, man. I don't. I can't even imagine myself walking out of Allegiant Stadium if the Raiders lose to the Colts on Sunday because there's just there's no again no business doing that. Not saying they won't because there's a, a chance that they could, but man, I don't even want to think about what that's going to feel like if that does happen. Finally, I think this is a kind of a cool catchphrase, and you can use it if you want to. Don't allow Saturday to have a great Sunday leading to a miserable Monday for Raider Nation. Simple. That's the overall thing. Don't allow Saturday to have a great Sunday leading to a miserable Monday for Raider Nation. And that's all I got for you for segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, Keys to Victory, what the Raiders need to do in all three phases of the game to come away with the win. Coming up in segment number three, going to get to your calls and texts straight off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Before I get to that, I do want to tell you about Simply Safe. And I don't know if you ever thought about securing your home with a home security system, but you've been putting it off, well, you'll want to listen up right now. All Locked On Raider podcast listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it. Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report a third year in a row. In emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. You know, during the holiday time, all of a sudden, guys, and people want to take off uh, packages off your doorstep, right? You need all the home security that you can get, including cameras. Simply Safe is whole. Home security with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. HD security cameras for inside and out. Smarter ways to detect motion that alerts you only when a threat is real. And even hazard sensors that detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. 24-7 professional monitoring service costs less than a dollar a day, less than half price of ADT's traditional professionally installed system. With the top-rated Simply Safe app, stay in complete control of your system anytime, anywhere. Arm or disarm, unlock for a guest, access your cameras, or adjust system settings. Right now, you don't want to miss your chance to save big on the only security system that, you know, we would recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL today. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL. There's no safe 
like Simply Safe. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and text straight off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707 654 4693. Let's start things off with Jordan in Oregon. He's calling to talk about John Abram being waived, talks about other first, former first round draft picks that are no longer with the team, and then talks about some other teams and what, the, what they've done with weapons around them. Here he is, Jordan in Oregon. Hey, what's going on, Q? Jordan in Oregon. Wanted to call in. Uh, just got the news update uh, about Jonathan Abram getting cut by the Raiders. And, you know, I just think it's a good time to kind of focus back on uh, several of our first round picks for the last little bit. And, and um, you know, I know there's a lot of question right now about where this team is at, but um, shout out to uh, Ari Mirov on Twitter um, at my sports update, JT, the brick kind of turned me onto this guy saying, uh, he's got over 600,000 followers, and he breaks a lot of the news before anybody. But I uh, just thought this was a really, really good uh, kind of tweet on his part. Just sums it up in a, in a short piece of just our last first-round picks, 2019, Cleve Farrell, fifth-year decline. Josh Jacobs, we all know, fifth-year decline. Abrams, cut. Uh, Damon Arnett, cut. Terrible person. Um Henry Ruggs, uh, tragedy, we all know what happened, cut. And Alex Leatherwood, cut. And honestly, Q, I think this is the first time just seeing that. I don't know, sometimes just seeing something is different than hearing it. But just seeing that on paper, I think it just goes to show there's no surprise to why the Raiders are where they are today. You know, looking at Philadelphia and Seattle recently and just kind of watching those franchises turn the corner, um, you know, Seattle, hell of a draft. They've got – um, three starters just out of this last draft and, um, and the Eagles as well. They've really done a, a good job of, of building around Jalen Hurts. And you look at a team like the Raiders and a, and a quarterback like Derek Carr and, um, him not having the talent of, of being able to scramble and being a guy that can move the pocket with his legs. You would hope you could hit on, on your top picks to surround the guy with some talent. And I'm not here to pound the table to try to keep Carr. Or, you know, as far as as far as this season goes, I, I'm considering it pretty much over. I think it's time for this team, you know, regardless of the outcome of of this Colts game, is to really take a hard look at this next draft. And obviously, Mark Davis himself needs to look at it because, you know, bringing in Mike Mayock, it looked like it could be a great move. There's picks like uh, Hunter Renfro in the later round. Um, it's just a solid pick, you know, and you think to yourself, like, wow, Mayock, this could be a genius move, but really taking a big, big overview of this whole team, the, the Raiders have drafted horrible for the last decade plus, and I think it's time to really hit this upcoming draft right. And um, just just so many areas they could address. I see, see how it would be hard to miss this year when you have a lot of needs like this. But anyway, I want your take on this. Peace out. Thank you so much, my man. I appreciate the call. And yeah, Ari Mayrob, that dude's good. He's really good from Pro Football Focus. I've had him on my radio show multiple times. Um, as far as the bad drafting, the Raiders have been really bad, right? I mean, overall, they've been really bad. They obviously have a few good players. You know, obviously the Max Crosby's, the Hunter Renfro's, Nate Hobbs, you know, guys like that. But a lot of misses for sure. So to build a team that competes year after year, you've got to hit on those picks, especially the early draft picks. So you can uh, have that cheaper contract and you can have them for longer. And those first round draft picks, man, when you have all that and you don't hit on them, that capital is is major for losing that. So uh, thank you for that call, my man. I do appreciate you. Next up, I got a text from Raider fan in San Diego. He says, hey, Q, hope you're doing well. So I see a lot of fans upset saying we should fire McDaniels. I'm not on that bandwagon. But if the Raiders lose to the dumpster fire of a franchise coming to town this week, I will be. There's no bleeping way the game should even be close. Having said that, just win, baby. As always, Raider Nation for life. Signed, Raider fan in San Diego. Straight up. I agree 100% with you. Um, I don't think even if the Raiders do lose, I don't think that McDaniels is going to be on the hot seat. I think that he gets at least next year. But that's just my gut feeling. So we'll see what happens. But as I've said multiple times this week, and I know it sounds crazy, the Raiders have no business losing this game. And, and again, I want to emphasize business. I'm not saying they're not going to lose the game. I'm saying they have no business losing the game. Up next, got a call from Cy Reezy from the Bay. He's calling to talk about the moves the Raiders made on Thursday and also talks about my thoughts on the Raiders having no business of losing the game. Here he is, Cy Reezy from the Bay. Raider Nation, it's your boy Cy Reezy from the Bay. Well, 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 Q. You said there's just no way 
the Raiders could lose to this Colt team, right? Right? This can't happen, right? And the Raiders said, challenge accepted. Because what happens right after you post that show? Well, on the same day they send Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro to IR, and then Blake Martinez gets wins of this and says, you know what, I think I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm reading the writing on the wall. This isn't how I want to spend my last days. And he retired. Um, and I think that's kind of the season that this team has just happened. So just when you think it can't get any worse, it does. And just as a side note, I, as a policy, never like it when people say it can't get any worse than this because things can always get worse. And especially when you're talking about playing in the NFL, because getting to the Super Bowl is like climbing Mount Everest. Every step you go higher, it gets harder and harder and harder to go up. But it's easy to fall down. And I think we see some of that happening here. But also on the same time, at the same time, I think the greater plan is being revealed to us because I think the fan base was kind of kept in the dark. And I'm not in, a, I'm not going full conspiracy mode here, but I think we've been lied to in some ways. You know, Mark Davis got up uh, at the press conference when they announced Dave Ziegler and, you know, Josh McDaniels, and he said, you know, this isn't a rebuild. You know, it's a level up. You know, we're going to the Super Bowl. Um, yet, you know, as soon as they got started, they started doing rebuild-like things, like gutting the defensive line and pretty much gutting the offensive line, which is kind of like a rebuild. And a lot of what they've done has not been working. And you're starting to see a narrative that's been created. You see Dave Ziegler get up in the press conference during the bye week and start talking about how it's all about execution. And he's so proud of the job that Josh McDaniels has done. And so they're trying to create this narrative that, like, hey, we don't have the players we need. We got what we want as coaches, but we got to get some better players. And that's what they're low-key trying to say, except a lot of those players are guys that they brought in, like that D-line that they gutted that's worse than the one they had last year. So we'll see. Food for thought. I don't know what's coming next. Tyreezy, I'm out. Thank you, my man. Appreciate the call. And, yeah, I mean, again, I said it. They have no business losing the game. You know, I'm not saying that they're not going to. Look, I don't want anyone to get that twisted. I said no business multiple times. Going back to Wednesday, I did not say they won't. I just said that there ain't no reason why they should lose the game unless they go out there and lose the game. But, you know, ever since the Saints game, I've been saying it's evaluation season, and that's exactly what it is the rest of the way, evaluation season. Thank you so much for your call, my man. I always appreciate hearing from you. Next up, and I just got a couple more. I got a text from Somay from Utah. It says, hey, Q, Somay here out of Provo, Utah. I know why. I know you say we have no business losing this game, but what I'm afraid of is the Colts defensive line against the Raiders offensive line. What do you think? Again, that's Somay from Utah. And, yeah, man, that's the thing. That's that's probably going to be the biggest chess match. One of the biggest chess matches for sure is can that Raiders offensive line stand up just a little bit to the defensive line of the Colts, right? I mean, don't allow – the, the pressure to get to Derek Carr. If they do and he's on the move all game or he's getting sacked all game, then it might end up being a 10-7 a, a game or, a, you know, a, a 6-3 game wins. It could be one of those old, ugly type, type of games, and you don't want that. So the Raiders offensive line has really got to step their game up and, uh, you know, step up to the challenge. So we'll see what happens. But, again, you're right. I've said it multiple times that plenty of people have quoted me. They have no business losing the game. Up next, got a call from my guy, P.E. in North Carolina. He's calling to talk about a trip he took to Vegas, and he actually ties that in with the Raiders. It's a really good story here from P.E. in North Carolina. I'll appreciate this, and I think you will as well. Here he goes, P.E. in North Carolina. What's up, Tupac? What's up, Raider Nation? P.E. from North Carolina. Q, we paid the pilot to land the plane. Quick story. Took a trip out to Vegas recently. Hey, Q, appreciate it for real, my man. You know, um, everything that you, you know, did for me, I appreciate it, brother. But look, when we got on that plane, Q, when we got to the airport, we saw the air control tower. When we got to the plane, we saw the maintenance people maintaining the plane. 
We saw people putting bags on the plane. When we got on the plane, we saw the pilot. We saw the co-pilot, the stewardesses and all that. So, look, we take our seat, and we take off. We get up in the air. Everything is cool, right? But what if, Q, but what if during that flight we run into bad weather or we run into turbulence or there's a mechanical failure? Thankfully, it wasn't. But what if it was? We pay the pilot, Q, to land the plane. The pilot doesn't look to the co-pilot. The pilot doesn't look to the stewardess crew. The pilot doesn't look to air traffic control. We pay the pilot to land the plane, Q. Regardless of everything that happened before that trip, before that plane took off, at that point it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore because guess what? Somebody got to land the plane. That's why we pay the pilot the big buck to land the plane. We saw a couple years back where the guy landed the plane on the Hudson River. I know everybody remembers that. But that's what we pay the pilot for. We pay the pilot when all hell breaks loose, he's got to land the plane. He doesn't look to other people. He doesn't make excuses about why whatever happened, happened. He just got to land the plane. And Q, my quarterback is not landing the plane right now. I don't care about what happened during the week. I don't care how your week of practice was. I don't care what play call it was. I don't. It doesn't matter. Because at that point in the game, you got the ball in your hands and you got the opportunity to land the plane. You got the opportunity to go down and score and win the game. Derek got to stop looking around, looking to blame other people, and he's looking for everybody else to land the plane but him. But everybody's looking at him like, nah, you the pilot, dude. You go land the plane. You go win the game. That's what he got to start doing, Q. He got to start going, winning the game at the end. Hey, uh, Jim from the Pacific Northwest, I see you, bro. Good to hear your calls too, man. And, uh, Shout out to the Magnificent Lunch Break. One of the best to ever do it. All right, peace out, Ready Nation. That's a fantastic call. Thank you, P.E. It's great to hear from you, man. And, um, yeah, it was great to, to to meet you and your wife and hang out with you guys for a little while while you were here in Vegas. I'm glad that you guys were able to go on that uh, stadium tour and, and enjoy Allegiant Stadium. But uh, that's, that story that you just shared, even better. That was the best thing ever. That story was fantastic. I don't even really know what else to say, right? Uh, I, I love the, you know, you pay the pilot to, to land the plane. I, the only thing I'd say back back to that is, is the pilot Derek Carr? Does the pilot have to be Derek Carr? Could the pilot be Josh McDaniels? Do the Raiders have a pilot, right? I mean, those I, I might use this call, honestly, on my radio show later on this afternoon. I'll be at Buffalo Wild Wings, but I might just have to run this. I might have to tell DeMond, hey, man, run this. This could be the subject of the show today. So, uh, PE, great stuff, man. Thank you so much. For that call and again it's good to uh, hear from you and make sure you tell your wife i said uh hello matter of fact tell her me and the wife said hello thank you so much my man finally we'll close things out with a text from jimmy s in houston said q with waller and renfro going to ir along with blake martinez retiring do you have any inside information as to what's going on i find it hard to believe the team is deciding to tank for draft position are we maybe going to see more younger players getting a chance to show what they can do for evaluation purposes it's really hard to have faith in anything that's going on with this team right now could things really be getting worse if we had to run it back with Basaccia? Or could things really be going worse if we had ran it back with Basaccia instead of going to McDaniels? Is there anything positive you could bring to the light? That's Jimmy S. in Houston. Thank you for the text, my man. And I don't have any insight. Uh, I know that uh, Waller's been dealing with a hamstring injury, and if you try to rush it back, I know that, you know, it can be worse, and then he'll be gone for the season. He might be gone for the season anyway. He's on IR, but uh, it's just kind of one, one of those things. I'm not really shocked by him. Renfro was a bigger shock for me. I just, I mean, because Waller's been gone for three games already. Renfro was a guy I was like, all right, well, he's going to get better. And then also when he's out with the oblique and, the, you know, the hamstring and everything he's dealing with, that's that's all bad. And then all of a sudden the double down, Blake Martinez retiring. Um, yeah, I just, I kind of feel like he saw the writing on the wall, knows the team's not going to be very good and says, you know what? I can just stay at home, be a dad, and let well, some of these young cats get a little bit of burn and, and I'm good. You know, he missed practice on Wednesday for a personal day. Now we know what that personal day was. He was trying to uh, figure out his future, and he decided that it was better for him to retire. Um, I don't know. You know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. I don't know what it would look like if Basaccia was the coach right now. I don't even know who'd be on the roster if Basaccia was the coach right now. So it's hard to say if it'd be any worse, if it'd be better. I mean, you really just don't know. Would Devontae Adams be a Raider if Basaccia was still uh, the coach? Who knows? 
Just don't know, right? You know, would they have thought, would that regime thought that that was a good move to go out and get Devontae Adams? I mean, that's that's a big question. It's just, it's so hard to go back and say, if, what, this, that, and the other. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's so difficult. So uh, I really can't answer that. But uh, I do believe we'll see a lot of young dudes uh, from here on out because, again, evaluation season is definitely going on. Thank you so much for that text. And that's all I got time for on today's show. I definitely appreciate everyone chiming in uh, each and every day on the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line number 707-654-4693. And uh, definitely appreciate everyone making the Lockdown Raider Podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, you can find the show free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube. My man Ari, always doing uh, plenty of work behind the scenes, making it happen at Ari Produces on Twitter. And one of these days, I'm going to bring him on the show as well. And so he can show his face and, you know, give his thoughts. I mean, he, he does it every day on ESPN Las Vegas. So uh, he has to hear about the Raiders and, and all that. So he got a little insight as well. So at one of these points, we're going to have to bring Ari on as well to, uh, you know, to give his thoughts and share what he thinks is going on with the silver and black. But that'll be for another day, Raider Nation, until uh, Monday. Hopefully we're talking about a victory. Uh, if you're going to be at Allegiant Stadium, make sure you come by the torch early. I'll be there at 10 a.m. doing a radio show. Q's kickoff is what I call it. It's a pregame, pregame show before JT the Brick and Eric Allen. Come on by, say what's up. I'd love to meet you and, uh, you know, chop it up with you for a little while. So I'll be at the torch on Coors Light Landing Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Love on your family. And most importantly, as always, just win, baby.